In this video, I'm going to explain to you the cause of homosexuality and how to prevent homosexuality birthing. Now I have cut several videos on this matter that have deleted them all because every time I watch them I know that I did not get my story across the way I wanted it which takes me back to this problem of many years and I will explain that later. First of all, the cause of homosexuality. Let me give you the foundation cause of it. When Amadana John, uh, that little jerk from a uh, squirt from Iran was here, he was asked if there were any homosexuals in Iran and he said no. And Jay Leno laughed, David Letterman laughed, Bill O'Reilly laughed, I imagine Jimmy Kimmel laughed, I guess Conan O'Brien got in on it, I don't know, but they all laughed. And I got to thinking, why would that guy put himself in a position to make everybody laugh at him? So I asked a young lady who had lived in Iran the younger part of her life and had, uh, shall we say, uh, escaped or got out somehow. That part I didn't ask her. All I know is she came to the United States or went to medical school and she's a doctor. And she told me there aren't any homosexuals in Iran. And I said, of course, why not? Very simple explanation. Because women in Iran are suppressed so badly that they want to have a child that is at a damn hearing aid. They don't want to have a child that is suppressed like them. They want to have a boy because boys are everything in Iran and girls are nothing. They still get stoned to death for doing something wrong. Why well, here we had a, an Iranian girl and I think ran away in Chicago, went to uh, Florida because she wouldn't marry the man her father wanted her to marry and she wouldn't go back to to Chicago because she said her daddy had killed her. Now, I don't know if she went back or not, but there's some sort of chic law or I don't know how you, what it is. I'm, I'm not going to follow it, so I don't pay that much attention to it. That make each member of the family just like a god and the ladies are the slaves and nothing. My husband still stoned their wives to death over there and it's perfectly legal. So anyway, why are there no homosexual children, men in Iran? Because when a mother is pregnant, she thinks, I got to have a boy, I got to have a boy, I got to have a boy, a boy, a boy, a boy. And she thinks, boy, 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 boy. That's not to say that there aren't some girls that are born in Iran. And that's not to say that they don't have tendencies of males. But they're not looked upon as badly if they don't step out of line. However, a few years ago, when they had that uprising in Iran and you saw the Home Guard come out, all those gals in them shiny, bright uniforms and them black, whatever they, with swinging them clubs, they were pretty masculine. Maybe that particular breed matches our lesbians, but they don't have any homosexuals. So, now how do I put that together with us? This is the part that I tried to explain this years ago, and I never had the example of Iran to talk from, and it was very difficult. 
But now, let's put it into the American society. World War II and the Korean War followed each other, bang, bang. And when Johnny come marching home from those wars, the women were waiting for him. Ooh, my sweetheart's home. Ooh, my sweetheart's home. And they got married. And they had kids. And as soon as the mother got pregnant, she patted her belly and said, I want a girl. I do not want a boy that has to go off to war. I want a girl. I want a girl. And so, they all had children. Nothing wrong with that. No. The ones that uh, said that they did want a boy, and if they had a girl, they got a little twisted. Just like the boys who were born to the mothers who said, I want a girl. Their minds got twisted. You see, it's the mind of the female that guides the thinking of the fetus. Now, I just got a book here. Uh, this has just been printed kind of recently, I guess. I don't know. From the library, and I can give you a passage from this, real simple. Scientists have not even come close to proving the genetic or biological cause for homosexuality. Okay. But it's the mind of the mother that guides the man. No, I'm going to step out of this picture for a minute and talk to you about what happened to me today. That's why I'm sailing this blog tonight. I went to the VA hospital for a particular kind of checkup on some sort of checkup I can't pronounce. I don't even try. I just move and I get them done. And I was talking to a man sitting out there waiting for my turn and a woman was listening. And I was telling him what I thought about the homosexuality problem and that it comes from the mind of the woman. And this lady was listening. And I said, ma'am? She said, oh, yes. I said, uh, do you have any problems? She said, no, no, I agree with you 100%. Could have knocked me down with a feather. I said, what? She said, I have a lesbian daughter. She's 15 years old. She said, when she was in my belly, the doctor said I was going to have a boy. So I thought, boy, 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 boy. His father come home, put his head on his stomach and say, Oh, isn't it great when we play baseball together? Oh, boy, 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 boy. She said, when my daughter was born, everything seemed fine for a while. But then I found out that she was a lesbian and liked girls. Okay, see, that's what happened to the whole population in 19... Oh, let's say 49, uh, 50, 51, 52, 56. All these kids were growing up. The children knew they were different. But the parents didn't know they were different. Some of them did. Like this lady, she knew her child was different. But they go off to school... And they come home and they know that they're different. They, the teachers get them all in a row, all in a circle and say, Okay, kiddies, let's get in a circle. Let's all join hands. And Tommy gets in a circle. And he's got Jimmy on this side, Dan on this side. And they all join hands. And Tommy thinks, he gets so much more pleasure of a sudden 
uh, holding the boy's hand than he does Anne's hand. So they get their first thoughts of homosexuality amongst each other. And maybe Jimmy uh, thinks to him, uh, well, you know, uh, I like holding your hand too, and there's a spark there. And Anne over here, she doesn't do it. But maybe, maybe the girl on the other side of her, they hold hands and maybe there's a spark there. Maybe they got a lesbian ship going. But that's how it gets in their mind. But they carry it. They never come home and say, hey, mom, guess what? Ah, they carry it with them. They know that they're different somehow, but they don't know how. So they continue to grow up. And we continue. We don't have a lesbian problem back in the 50s and uh, the early 50s and so forth. We just don't. But they grow up, and when they go to high school, then it starts to show a little bit more. Maybe parents learn a little bit more about the kid. And they haul them off to the psychiatrist. Oh, boy, did they haul them off to the psychiatrist. He no longer plays with uh, with trucks. He plays with dolls. He plays with other boys. <laughs> Spending money on doctors should have never have been spent. In his whole book, I think it's in this book here, that there's one case of a lady who got straightened out by a psychiatrist, got married, had a family, and so forth. One out of thousands of lesbians. But anyway, they, they, they're growing up, and they understand now that they are different. And they go out into the streets, and they find a different kind. No. The, uh, I have said this for a long time, that uh, where in the hell did all those Indians come from? But they seem to have come out of the woodwork at one time. I didn't know that. I never followed this after I originally, and I'll, I'll go back to what I, the work I originally done on this. I didn't know the things that uh, this book has to say uh, until I read the book. It says the modern gay rights movement is usually considered to have begun the Stonewall Rebellion on June 28, 1969, in which police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay bar in New York City, and collided with the homosexuals. Now, 1950 to 1969, 1948 to 1969. That follows my time frame. Them kids are now adult and they are rebelling when people pick on them because they want the difference. It's starting to come out. And that's when it that was advertised on the television and on the newspapers and went to coast to coast. And America said, where in the hell did all these Indians come from? Oh, that was custard. Where in the hell did all these homosexuals come from? And that was the beginning of the revolution. They found each other in their own right. And how did they get to be homosexuals? Because mama wanted a boy, or wanted a girl, not a boy, mama wanted a girl that couldn't go off to war. And she had a boy. But she taught that boy how to be a girl. And in the meantime, when the situation was reversed, if she didn't know what was in her belly, she taught the girl how to be a boy. Now, back in those years, the doctor couldn't tell you whether you were going to have a boy or a girl. So it was, it was the pardon me, the person putting up with, this is what I want, this is what I want. And if they so much want to want, they are teaching their fetus what to be. Somehow they're turning a cog up here somewhere in their brain that makes their sexual preference different. What I mean is different 
it's not different, it's the same. It's just that it's in the wrong body. You got a baby in the belly who's a girl. And mama wants a boy. Let's say this particular mama wants a boy. So she's a lesbian. And she grows up and she's stunningly beautiful. And she prefers a girl as a mate. Why? Simple. Because when that cog in her brick turned, it turned and she's looking out her eyes as a male would look out her eyes. And what do men like? Men like girls. So here's the lesbian looking out as a man and likes a girl. And here's another one who likes a girl and bingo. They meet and they get together and they're getting smart. Now with the men it's the same way. The homosexual. He grows up and he's looking for a mate and what does he prefer? Well, his little cog up there turned him on as a female. <coughs> and what are girls like? Boys. Oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. So you got one guy over here who's looking for a boy, and one guy over here is looking for a boy, and <coughs> that's it. Now I started doing looking into this probably probably around 68 or 70. And not long after that, I guess six or seven years after that, I had predicted to my friends that someday we're going to have same-sex marriage. Oh, ha, 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 ha. That was the first time they laughed at me. Wasn't the last, but they're still laughing. Wasn't the last, but they're still laughing. But same-sex marriages are here. Their love for each other is as true as any boy-girl love for each other can possibly be. It is not their fault that they're homosexuals or lesbians. It is not the parents' fault that they're homosexuals or lesbians. I had, when I put the first blog out and around here at the old folks' home, I had religious people coming at me, Lee, you're crazy. God is doing that. God is doing that. Whoa, 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 whoa. These children were born because two people did what God intended us to do. Multiply. Get together. Do the business. That's why they're born. Their mind got twisted, not by God, but by the environment, by the wars, by the troubles on earth. That the mother who loved the child wanted her daughter or her son to face a different thing. So she knew her son was going to face a war. So she wanted a girl, a girl, 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 but when it was a boy, it had the mind of a girl, and vice versa. It's just that simple. Now, the lady I met down at the VA, she had a 15-year-old lesbian daughter. I said, you agree with me? She said, I sure do. I said, what part? She said, the doctor told me I was going to have a boy. So I set all my sights on a boy, all my wishes, all my dreams, all everything on a boy. And I have a girl who has that little of a boy. Her 50-year-old daughter has a girlfriend. And the mother is okay with it. I told the mother, I said, you know, it's not your fault. She said, oh, she said, I knew that years ago. I didn't ask her if she made a lawsuit against a doctor on malpractice or anything. 
uh, because they would have to drag everything through court that nobody knows that nobody knew anything about it then. They know about it now because I'm telling them that I'm the only one talking it. But uh, she said, oh, she knew that years ago. But you know, she loves her daughter so much. I doubt if she would even today go to court for a malpractice suit. She, would, she just wouldn't. They're just, they're just too close. They're, they're just a loving, a loving family. But anyway, that is the cause of homosexuality. Whether the person who sees his blog or not disagrees with me, I don't care. But if any young people who are going to have children see what I have to say on this video, and when their spouse gets pregnant, they don't say, baby, 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 baby. Instead of, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Boy, 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 girl, girl, girl. And they have a homosexual child. It's their fault. The parents, if they give sex to a homosexual child after they see my video, they can't blame it on... We don't know what happened, because I just told them what happened. And you won't find anyone else who tells them differently. Listen to this out of this book. Uh, I'll find it here. Scientists have not even come close to providing a genetic or biological cause for homosexuality. Scientists haven't, but I have. I'm a cook. Not only did I come close, I hit the nail right on the damn head. So pay attention to what I say. Now, why didn't I bring this up years ago? several reasons. I did. I went and I wrote and I spent money and I sent letters to scholars in colleges since this was like 20, 30 years ago. They're all probably all dead or they don't, damn sure they don't remember. I went to see a lot of them. And nobody answered, ever answered me by mail, by the way. I sent it to celebrities that I thought maybe would talk about it and carry the ball and get people clicking. And so they wouldn't say, girl, girl, boy, 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 boy. But no celebrity picked it up. I made a pamphlet, 125 pamphlets that had two circles on it, with the one with a broken arrow and the other with a broken cross depicting the, the, the breakdown in the, in the uh, sexes. I sent five copies of Elizabeth Hasselbeck, and I'm sure she threw them away, never heard. Sent them to Julius, uh, Julius, uh, Regis Philbin and Kathy Lee, and I'm sure they got thrown in the trash. I wanted somebody to get on television and say, Hey, this may not be the right idea, but it's one idea. Let's let's give it some serious thought. The only difference between then and now is now I know it's the right idea. But anyway, when I went to see the people in, in person, all they said was, Oh, you go see so-and-so over in John Hopkins Hospital. He's the authority on homosexual children. So I go look up so-and-so in the library, and what his authority is, he thinks that homosexual children are formulated after birth. Nope, they don't even say that in his book today. Let me, let me give you the book here. And I said no then, and this says no now.
Uh, hell, I can't even find it. Okay. Here it is right here. Now this is today. I said this then, and they're saying it now. Researchers theorize that sexual orientation is determined so early in a child's formation that it cannot be considered a choice. So early in a child, they believe that. Then why don't they believe that the, when the baby is in the belly, the mother's the teacher? Oh, maybe they think the mother can't teach her own kid wrong, but they can because we have lesbians and homosexuals. But anyway, they said, go see him. Go look him up. Go talk to him. Go talk to him. He's the authority. He writes articles for the American Medical Journal. They print them. We all read them. Everybody thought this guy was the guru. He was the god of homosexual thinking. It's only one thing wrong. He turned out to be a fraud. There was a set of twins born, and when they were circumcised, one of them was completely castrated. God, I hope that guy from John Hopkins wasn't in on having that done. And before they sewed them up, they said, oh, let's make a womb. We'll make a girl out of them. So they got a boy and a girl. After birth. This is right up that guy's alley from John Hopkins. So he steps in, or he has been in, or he had made the plans, or even before they, they cut him up, he was sticking. I don't, I don't know. I can't see that. But he brought him in every so often, and he interviewed him, and he talked to him, and he psychoanalyzed him, and this and that and so forth. And he wrote up his reports. And I'll just call a little girl Janie. Well, little Janie... Oh, she's such an adorable little girl. She plays with dolls. She plays with her buggy. Uh, she plays house. She plays uh, she plays uh, uh, tea and uh, uh, tea time and so forth. And uh, and a little boy, he plays football and he plays other things and so forth. And that's written in the journal. And this is what he's got everybody in the country thinking. Oh, this is done after birth. So... What he didn't plan is the kids grew up and learned how to read. And they read the damn book and they said, this guy's a fraud. When Janie went in there, she wanted the dolls and she wanted the, I mean, uh, she wanted the, the uh, shovels and she wanted the toys and she wanted the cars. She didn't want the dolls. So they sued him for fraud. He was writing another book that never hit the shelves because nobody had printed the damn thing. But seemingly, when he was degraded, everybody in the United States said to themselves, I will not take on that subject. And you haven't seen it. This is... This is one of the first books that I've seen, but I haven't looked for years. I haven't looked for years. The only reason I, that I started doing this again is because when I was in Las Vegas, I died. I won't go into how and the when and the what and the which and I died and I was brought back. And I figured I was given a second life. What am I going to do with that second life? I think I'll go back to that old project and take a look at it. And I got to doing other things, and I, I, I had to move down here to Texas. One reason I'm losing my eyesight. The second reason I, I'm damn near, damn near deaf. And uh, my daughter wanted me to move down here to Texas. And I'll tell the story about my daughter. I said, I, she wanted me to move down here in case I get hit by a car. I'd be easier to sweep up than I would be up in up in Las Vegas, but that's not true. I mean, we're a loving family. I see my daughter quite often. <laughs> but anyway, I come down here and I get caught up in the old folks' camaraderie and so forth. 
and in the mood, in the move after I died up there and come down here, I lost my trend of thought of what I should do. And then, I don't know, I woke up one morning and said, why aren't I pursuing that? So I was started all over. What did I do wrong the first time? Well, I didn't have the plan. But the thing that uh, I, I remember the uh, the, uh, the no sex, no uh, homosexuals in Iran. And I had asked a doctor in Vegas, uh, the Iranian doctor, and she told me. And I just put that in the back of my mind and moved. And I didn't force it forward until just a couple of months ago I start working on this again. But that's why it's coming back now and that's why I went to the library. I went to the library looking for the books of that doctor. The fraud. Because it seems like I say, it seems like after he was discredited there was no authorities on the subject and if they were, nobody would listen to him because they were so ashamed of embracing this clown, they didn't want to embrace another clown like me and be wrong. The only thing is, I have just shown you that I'm not wrong. And you'll believe it. If you get pregnant and a doctor tells you it's a boy, Keep telling that I want a girl. Try to change its mind. You'll have a homosexual. Or if the doctor says you'll have a girl, keep trying to make a boy out of it, you'll have a lesbian. If it happens after you listen to what I have had to say, it's your fault. It's not God's fault. It's not the doctor's fault. It's your fault. Because even if the doctor tells you what it is, like the lady at the hospital today, the doctor had it wrong. It's baby, 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 baby. <clears throat> when I got here, I had one copy of my pamphlet left. I had mailed them out everywhere. The people that I thought would, if they would carry the ball, it would be listened to. I don't know if and he got rid. The manager is your wife. He said, oh, my wife is pregnant. We just found out today. I ran home, emptied a thousand boxes of papers, come up with one booklet, gave it to him and said, here, read this. But I want it back. He read it and I never got it back. That was 18 months ago. And he is the father of a beautiful little boy who is all boy. So, I'm just slow getting around to this. I have someone here helping me, and they're, they, they don't have the time to put into it that I put into it, and I get real mad. And I was just getting ready. I got so mad, I was ready to cancel the whole thing again and forget it for a while. And then I met the lady today, and she brought back all faith in me. I called up my girlfriend and said, you're not going to guess what happened. And I told her what happened. And my, my girlfriend is a very religious person. She said, okay. Use it. But that's where we're at right now. Is I wanted to tell you the story of why. I hope you believe why. I got the timeline. I got the fact that the doctors can't find anything. I got the fact that they say that that happens to a baby before it's born. All of that fits my discovery. <laughs> when I had a booklet, I sent a booklet off to Stockholm. I said, uh, I don't expect a lot, but I just expect a small peace prize for this. I never got an answer, but I didn't think I would. 
But anyway, there's one book that my friends, 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 friends have that I don't know. Now this other book that I have, I wrote this book, The Alien Within Me. I wrote that in uh, nine. No, I wrote it nineteen ninety eight, and I got it copyrighted in. Uh, 1990, or I'm sorry, 1988. I got a copyright in 1990. Uh, I printed it in 1991. It's got my my picture on there for me from 1991. It's a hardcover book. It's first mentioned, what I talk about is it being from the mind. I first mentioned it in this book. Uh, well, I wrote the book in 88, 1988. And I also mentioned about the, the suicide rate. The United States was having or is having a terrible suicide rate amongst kids. And here that goes back to the motor. Oh my God, I'm pregnant. Oh, I don't want this baby. The baby grows up. The baby grows up with a complex. Every baby loves its mother. I wish I could say every mother loves its baby, but let's say 99.99999% of them do. Uh, the baby wants to please the mother. And if mama don't want that kid, that kid grows up knowing that. Because I knew that. I knew that when I hung myself. The ordeal of me hanging myself is in this book right here. The book was not a good seller. I want to print five. I, I just wrote a book because I wanted the experience of writing a book. I want a hard cover, but I don't think any because I don't didn't think the soft covers were worth doodly. And I put a lot of money into it, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I never sold very many copies. It just didn't sell well at all. I advertised it in uh, some magazines. It's called The Alien Within Me. I advertised it in some magazines. I got a few mail-ins and so forth. But uh Oh, that cost me about six or seven thousand to experiment with that, but it was fun. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the first time that I mentioned him, no, I mentioned the suicides, you know. Uh, oh, I don't want this baby. In a, oh, I don't want the, the mother knows. It. The mother knows it. My mother said she didn't want me. And she changed her mind with it just a few seconds later. Oh, yes, I do. I need a boy. Not I want a boy. I need a boy. So it can wear all its brother's hand-me-downs. I wore hand-me-down clothes until I was 12 years old. I graduated from grade school with hand-me-down clothes on. Nothing new. hand me down when I got my money and start working, well, I splurged it before I went to high school. I was making a dollar a day and two dollars on the weekends. And the, to a kid, that's a lot of money. But when I went to high school, I moved downtown with my grandfather. He moved into a, a uh, house that had a bad reputation for girls entertaining men for money. And I started to dress better because I was buying my clothes. The clothes were not expensive then, but what I didn't buy, I stole. So my last two years of high school, I was a very good dresser. I wasn't best dressed in the class, but the guy who was best dressed in the class, he sure deserved it. Bill Steinbrook. 
I, he's probably still a very snappy grocer. He was just good. But uh, things your mother teach you never go away. And if you think real hard, you'll come up with a thought someday and you'll say, where did that come from? It probably came when you were a fetus. It might have. Don't sell that sharp. But as for the homosexual and the lesbians, they come right out of the mind of the mother. God has nothing to do with it. And it's good people because they didn't know. Scientists are not telling you today what I'm telling you, but they should. They should say, scientists should stop saying you're going to have a boy, you're going to have a girl. They should say you're going to have a baby. Because they make mistakes like they made mistake about the lady who was in the hospital today with her daughter. So, that's what I wanted you to hear. I started the other tapes with the stories about the why up front and it never had to punch. I needed to punch to, th to throw it out there and say this is what I believe, this is what I'm happy to, and this is what this is about. So sooner or later this one here is going to go on, go on the blog in place of the other one or the other two that's out there. But in the meantime, I think that's about all I have to say this time. I could go into some several other subjects, but uh, they wouldn't be connected. So, in the meantime, God bless and remember. If you're only five minutes early for work, you're already late. Good day.